Hello, welcome back to Heroes of Might and Magic 3, where we are approaching the end of month 2. Um, still kind of a little bit boxed in at the moment. We've got Ayn over there with her 5 to 9 Titans, who is pretty much probably the biggest threat on the map. Um, probably also stronger than Uthredin, certainly right now because he just has the one gargoyle on him, but she's pretty scary and that's a big part of the reason we're kind of struggling to leave the starting area. Uh, as soon as we do, we could be attacked by her and pretty much wiped out. So having to play pretty defensively, but on the upside, we still have a lot of stuff we can build up, whereas I think the AI is about as strong as it's going to get. So I think it's okay. Even if we can't expand, I think we do have options. Um, for one thing, we can literally just sit on our Dwarven treasuries and get obscenely rich, which is always a nice option to have. Another thing we're going to do is we're going to go into this town and build the Major Skill level 3 because I'm pretty confident that we can get this next turn. Uh, we still need quite a bit of ore, but I can't see why we can't do that. After all, we do now have, I think, three ore pits? Four ore pits, yeah, so we can definitely get that next turn. Um, and then we're going to have a nice boost of another four green dragons going into next week. And we can at some point hopefully upgrade our dragon cliffs. And once we actually have gold dragons, I'm pretty confident we can then make a proper push. But I'm reluctant to spend any more money just in case. Let's see exactly how much we're making. So we're making 16,000 per turn, which is not bad, obviously. And in that case, we can definitely afford to go for the city hall which will at least kind of pay for itself going into next week, or tomorrow even. And then we do have a couple of dungeon towns that can also be built up, but I'm not sure I want to rush into that. I'll probably get the Mana Vortex at one of them, but I don't need to do that on this particular turn. Although I should perhaps... It's just a little bit expensive, like I could start stocking up on Minotaurs. Definitely. Uh, another thing I could do here while I'm here is I could just get the Battle Scholar Academy, although I, again I need to kind of hold hold off on that because even though we do have good ore income we shouldn't go overboard um, and we don't want to have to trade for too much because we're already going to have to do a little bit of trading for that at the start of next turn. So I'm going to play it safe I think and just end the turn here. I don't think we need to move any of these heroes. So let's just go for it and let's see what the AI does. So Ain is... Uh, Looking like she's about to loop round, and then approaching from the south. We've got Clavius, who is also very scary. So if they both come to attack us at once, there's really not much we can do about that. We're going to have to just catch one out, and then hopefully somehow catch the other one just in time. So it's not going to be easy. I could pop into the town here just to grab myself a little bit of extra mana, and I think that does make sense, so let's just go for it. Okay, so we've now got 80 spell points, but it's going to be kind of difficult to chase Ain down still. We're at least going to be in a good position to scare off Clavius, I hope, and let's make sure we swap some of these forces around. And then over in this town, we are going to build the Dragon Cliffs. We just need two ore, which is very easily done. What can we actually afford to give up on? So we obviously don't want to give up on Crystal, because we're definitely making good use of that at the moment. Uh, we have enough marketplaces that we can just trade one for one, sulfur to ore. So that's certainly worth doing. And then we can build the Dragon Cliffs. Probably best that we don't spend any more money, because we're going to want to stock up on as many units as possible at the start of next turn, and potentially could build another hero in Bathier just to help transfer the dragons. Not sure if we should do that. If I do buy them this turn, then I will get the extra movement points with the dragons. But is that going to be enough to reach Kaya? I think it is, so let's do it. It's a bit of money spent, but it's money we probably would have ended up spending anyway, so I think that's fine. And then the rest of our heroes, this guy is pretty busy. Let's go to the graveyard. We could actually recruit quite a few 
Walking Dead, but obviously that's pretty pointless. If I can actually find myself with a Necropolis hero, then I probably will actually recruit one, because having two decent towns of that type is always nice. Even though I hope we won't have to build up from scratch. Ideally I can just finish off the map with Uphrotin, and I think once we do start making our push we can do it pretty quickly. It would be a lot easier if we actually had Earth Magic, because we do have Town Portal, but we're pretty limited in how we can actually use it. And I think the rest of these heroes are pretty much fine where they are. Yeah, I think that's all fine. So I can potentially get one more creature recruitment building. Uh, I don't think we want anything here. In this town, we can't actually afford anything because pretty much everything costs ore. And to be frank, I don't think I want to trade for any more ore. We don't have as many resources as we once did. So let's play it safe as yeah, Ain is coming. It looks like she's going to attack us and Clavius is coming at the same time. So that's a little bit bothersome. On the upside, we can actually take out Clavius immediately, um, but taking out Ain is going to be difficult. I'm going to actually watch this turn back because I want to get a good idea, roughly, of how far she can travel. So that is not bad movement, but probably not... Suggest she doesn't have logistics. I don't know that for sure, but that didn't seem like too far to me. Um, and I think we can probably keep our hero chain safe. Okay, so let's begin by picking up as many resources as we can. So we're going to send Uland to the windmill, and he can't quite reach the second corpse. We're going to send Jem straight up to the windmill and just ignore the homestead for now, because I'm pretty confident we're not going to be able to afford to buy these elves. Instead, we're going to focus on buying up our green dragons, our grand elves, and probably nothing else from this particular town, because it's just a bit too unupgraded, but in our main town we're going to take Genova out, although actually before we do this we need to tuck Mafala into the town. Then going back to our starting town we're going to buy up the green dragons once again, the grand elves, but also the war unicorns and the pegasi, and then we've still got 2k left in the bank, which is probably going to be just enough for the dwarves. Pretty close. So I can trade some of these resources I just picked up, and I'm not sure we need all this sulfur. At some point we can potentially upgrade our dungeon towns, but right now I think we do want to stock up because we're going to be attacked pretty imminently. So let's finish off getting the dwarves and then let's just pick up a few extra centaurs. So Genova can go all the way, Coronius can't quite get there, but I think if we send Genova to meet him, that might just about work. Let's try it like this. Take everything we can from him, pass over a single centaur captain, and then we will head up towards Kaya, which we can just about reach, pass everything over except the centaur captain once again, and then jump underground, go down to Sylvia, pass everything we can over, and then Sylvia, that's a little bit unfortunate. So we can't quite reach Clavius this turn. So it's going to be slightly more complicated with Uphrotin. We have to see how far he can get. So Uphrotin, I think he could meet up with Sylvia, but if he met up with Sylvia, then we couldn't also fight Clavius in the same turn. And that's a big problem, because if Clavius decides just to ignore Uphrotin, which is probably what would happen if we actually picked up the rest of these units, uh, he can then just pass us by, go to the south, and take our dungeon town. If we try to chase him down, of course, that does leave Ain free to go and attack our rampart towns, which would be completely unacceptable and might actually just completely lose us the game. So I'm starting to think we probably just have to go and attack Clavius straight away with what we currently have. Which is really not ideal, because I now realise he's a lot stronger than I thought. And in fact, he is the strongest player of the orange team, um, and Ain is the strongest of the blue team, so we're potentially about to go up against two of the strongest heroes on the map, uh, with a somewhat limited army, or at least an army that's not quite as strong as what it could be. So I'm, I'm a little bit worried, to be honest. The other issue is, we do have 80 spell points, but 
we're probably going to have to use all of them, and then we're not going to be able to town portal back to our rampart town to help that out. So this is pretty bad in general, but I think what we're going to do is just do our best to take out Clavius, hopefully not lose too many units. We're going to use the Pegasi just to block off the rocks and waste the turn. And then everything else, we're just going to try and blind it. Bit by bit, we're going to try and blind everything. So I think this arrangement probably works, but... This is going to be painful. Let's just go for it. Okay, so we're expected to take down one Ancient Behemoth, and by the looks of it, only about half of his forces. So that's not good. We need to play this really smart. So his fastest creature is the Thunderbird at 11 speed. Uh, our Green Dragons are 11 speed too, but he'll go first. So this thing... I quite deliberately didn't put it at the top because I'm thinking I will almost certainly just blind the Orc Chieftains. We don't really want to move over to their side of the field. We want them to come to us. And then I think this guy just wants to put himself or herself, I guess. These are women, I guess. Uh, we're going to put them probably just in front of the Grand Elves just to take some hits or to be a bit of a meat shield, I guess. We're going to send this forward just to waste the turn of the Thunderbirds. And then he's going to come forward with everything else. We can potentially blind the Thunderbirds next turn, but the main thing is we put them in a position where they can't do anything to us from the start of next turn. Um, I don't know exactly what spells he has, but he does have 54 out of 30 spell points, plus 5 spell power, so in some ways he's more of a threat than we are, although he did just go for a pretty weak spell on the Ogre Magi. It's still going to make them pretty difficult to deal with, so worth bearing that in mind. I think we just want to move these away. I could try waiting. That seems fairly risk-free since no one can actually reach us. On the other hand, that would trap our unicorns because they can't get around, they can't get through and they're going to end up having to take their turn before the dragons so I'm going to move them up to here and then I think I should just be able to wait with these hang on, does that work? yeah the centaur captains are going to be forced to move before the unicorns so I believe that's fine if I've worked that out right they're going to go up that way so they can reach us next turn. So I think they've got to be the highest priority to blind. And where they're currently stood, they could actually block off the Wolf Raiders. But not the Thunderbirds. So it's only really the Wolf Raiders we can block. We have to stay out of range of these as well, although I guess they're going to be blinded for a long time. Seven turns apparently, but I can't figure out why that is. Possibly we've got an artifact. I can't remember, it's been a, it's been a couple of weeks. We're going to go to here just so the Thunderbirds can't reach us. And then these guys are free to shoot, but we're going to wait. See if anything can come a little bit closer. Goblins are going to come up that way. We can get a full powered shot on them. We can also go for it on the Ogre Magi, but... I think we should be able to move our Centaur Captains out of the way. At the start of next turn, which is almost certainly going to be the best option. So let's go for the goblins. Wolf Raiders come along there, and now these guys are free to attack, but I think the retaliation would just be a bit too heavy. Were we to go for the hobgoblins, we could then move away next turn before the Ogre Mage get their turn, but I'm not sure that's a good option. Even the hobgoblins are going to do a lot of damage back, and we're only expected to kill about 99 of them. Which means we're going to be taking retaliation from 250 goblins. I don't think we should go for it, frankly. If we got the blind, obviously that'd be fantastic, but there's no real reason to think that would happen. So I think we're going to be forced just to move up. Uh, if we can keep out of their range, that'd be great. What I might do is play it fairly safe and go up to here, which at least means if the Wolf Raiders come along and attack us, we can blind them in this spot and we can somehow create some kind of block up towards the top. Uh, we might be able to actually kind of box ourselves in. I'm not sure if that'll work. It probably won't, but there's nothing up, there's nothing much else to do with those right now, so that'll have to do. 
And then a new round begins, and we should almost certainly blind the Ancient Behemoths immediately. Uh, I'm going to have to wait with these, which is a problem, because they're in range. But if I go forward, there's nothing I can attack that won't put me in range of the Thunderbirds. So we do just have to wait, I think. So let's start by blinding these. And the Thunderbirds are going to come forward. Ogre Magi are being really beefed up here. Uh, I could of course, well I don't think I can actually attack backwards this way. Yeah, that wouldn't actually work. So I'm not sure what to do with the Green Dragons. Thunderbirds just waited. So they're going to be kind of awkward to deal with. I think we might have to let them come in for the first attack. Either that or we throw the Centaur Captains forward purely as bait and let them get destroyed. Which we probably shouldn't do. On the other hand, we can kill a lot of these. And perhaps, if we go forward now, we can't stay safe from the Ogre Mage actually. So it's probably best if we try to focus down the Wolf Raiders. War Unicorns will go next. The thing is, if we go for this, of course, we're going to take a huge amount of retaliation from the Wolf Raiders. Uh, we're going to lose at least one Green Dragon, probably multiple. I still think we should probably go for this. We'll go for the Wolf Raiders, then we can at least damage them before they get their double attack off. Uh, that is going to enable the Thunderbirds to attack us this turn. Plus the Hobgoblins. Yeah, this is tough. I don't really know what to do. Not doing quite as much damage as I would have liked. So having thought about it, I think we do have to accept that the Hobgoblins are probably just going to come in and do some damage to us. Because we can move everything else away from the Wolf Raiders. The Wolf Raiders, I think, can reach the Ballista. So they might go for that, or they might even go for the first aid tent, if they can reach that. That's probably the best option, because anything else we might do is going to force us to go forward, um, which is going to make us easy to hit by the Ogre Magi and the Thunderbirds. So the Centaur Captains, or possibly the Silver Pegasi, could end up taking a really nasty hit here from the Hobgoblins. This does put the Green Dragons at risk as well, but... I think we have to accept that we're going to take some damage here. Um, mostly going to waste the Unicorn's turn here, but... In the end, it might just about work out. We need to make sure we give the Centaur Captains enough space to leave, get out of range of the Magi, and then we just have to kind of gang up on the Hobgoblins with everything that we can still move with, which is going to be the Silver Pegasi, the Dwarves, and the Dragons. So let's go for this. And then these guys just need to get out of range. So let's put them here. Please come forward, they can't reach us unless they get morale. Speaking of which, they've got really good morale, so that's a problem too. But we know these are going to come in and attack us, and we know that nothing else can reach us. So let's go for these first. They come forward. They go for the Centaur Captains, which is fine, I'm pretty happy to sacrifice them. Ogre Mage, I come forward, they don't get morale. Ah. Didn't think about that. We have, of course, uh, blocked in our dwarves, and they're not going to be able to do anything this turn. We don't necessarily have to attack the goblins if we don't want to. So at the start of next round, which is very rapidly coming up, we could blind the Ogre Magi. We could also potentially send everything to the bottom of the field, try and attack the Thunderbirds. I'm not sure if there's some way we can do this that creates a block. We could create a block with the Wolf Raiders, but the Hobgoblins can still pretty much get around. We can stop them from reaching the Green Dragons. So for the rest of this round, it's going to be the Green Dragons are going to go, and then we're going to be able to follow them up with a hit from the Silver Pegasi. So it is pretty tempting just to go for the Hobgoblins, I think. Let's try and clear them out. Then at the start of next round, we're going to pretty much sacrifice the Silver Pegasi just to absorb the retaliation from the Thunderbirds. And then the Hobgoblins are pretty much completely dealt with. I'm not sure we can get these away. 
if we blind the Wolf Raiders, Grand Elves are actually going to be trapped. So maybe this plan doesn't quite work. If we blind the Ogre Magi, Thunderbirds, I don't think we can stop them from coming in. Yeah, of course not. <laughs> they can of course just fly, so that's not going to work. So I would be putting the Grand Elves at risk, and I, I don't know if there's any way we could actually save them. If I went for haste instead, then the Wolf Raiders can easily chase us down. Unless I start hitting them with pretty much everything, then the Ogre Magi can pretty much catch us up if we do go for an attack on the Wolf Raiders. So this is really tough. I think we just end up taking hits. Uh, I might have to just sacrifice the Grand Elves, because nothing else is going to get away. Um, Battle Dwarves also can't really get away. they got 7 speed. And yeah, it's not going to be enough to get past the Magi. So I think the Magi are a much bigger threat than the Wolf Raiders. And in that case, I could perhaps just blind the Magi and try to beat down the Wolf Raiders. Thunderbirds are almost certainly going to come for the Grand Elves. So we might have to accept that we pretty much just lost them. These are going to go before our Green Dragons too, that's worth bearing in mind. But all the more reason to potentially weaken them slightly. 3 to 7 kills is not much. I have to kind of take my time here because uh, this is really pivotal. This could make or break the game pretty much. And there doesn't seem to be any option that avoids immense pain. So I'm starting to think we perhaps just sacrifice the Grand Ales here. But then we can't really gang up on the Thunderbirds because the Thunderbirds are going to move into our area. So we can't just send everything down to fight them. If we went for the Mass Haste, then we'd have to find some way of getting past the Wolf Raiders, which I don't think we can kill them off fast enough. So I think this is going to be probably the most painful round of the fight. And we just have to kind of pick our poison. I think I might let the Thunderbirds attack us and try and beat down the Wolf Raiders while also blinding the Magi. So these are 8 speed, I'm not sure if they actually go before the Wolf Raiders or not. Let's have a quick check, because that could make a big difference. So the Wolf Raiders are going to go before the Grand Elves. That's another problem. So the Grand Elves are not really going to be able to do anything, they're going to get mobbed by the Thunderbirds. Unless we blind the Thunderbirds, but then we haven't blinded the Ogre Magi. And the Ogre Magi are impossible to get away from. So, I guess we just have to blind the Ogre Magi. Or we accept that the Grand Ales are dead. And that could work too. And I think that does make sense. I'm going to try and gang up on the Thunderbirds. And... I think I will blind the Wolf Raiders. I'm not sure this makes sense though, I'm really not. Okay, I'm just going to have to wing it because I, I cannot decide. Uh, I at least know that most of our units, or lots of our units, are faster than the Wolf Raiders, which makes them probably an ideal choice of target. So, let's go ahead and blind these. And then we're going to take a strong retaliation here. I don't really want to put these in a position where we can't attack them with our dragon. But that might just end up happening. Alternatively, I go for the hobgoblins. I just leave these here and hope that the ogre magi go for them instead of the grand elves. Or I could even go for the block. I could go for the block. But no, let's go for these. Okay, so they do quite a lot of damage back. Uh, if we attack with these, we need to make sure that we don't end up accidentally killing our Silver Pegasi. But then again, if we do, I'm not sure that matters that much. Because they're probably going to go down either way. 
and I think we do just want to focus these down before they get their turn. Uh, I could just move these out completely, and then the War Unicorns can get their hit off, and then then it's going to be the Wolf Raider's turn, and I don't think the War Unicorns going to do enough damage. So I've got to be very careful here. I think we should at least... I think we can keep the Silver Pegasus, I say. Oh, never mind. I thought that was going to go through this hex and then follow it up with this hex, so that that really did not work. And then these are forced to wait. Yeah, I might mess this up slightly. Okay, let's protect our Grand Elves in that case. They go for that. They don't manage to kill us. Now these are going to get their turn, um, but they have good defense. So we're only expected to get, even with this many Grand Elves, we're expected to get about 5 kills, which is not much. And I could go for these instead. But the Ogre Magi can actually reach our dragons. So this doesn't quite work. Uh, if I were to move someone else out, the Battle Dwarves can't get past. So I don't think we can actually protect the Green Dragons. Yeah, I've not done this right. i really not. But this is a hell of a tough fight. Screw it. We're just gonna wing it. Okay, so we take out our own Silver Pegasi, but I'm not sure I care that much anymore. Uh, I'm gonna take these out, I think. And then the Yoga Mage are probably gonna kill off about half our green dragons. But then we can blind them. And then we can kind of pick and choose who we want to take out and just focus them down one by one. Maybe starting with the Orc Chieftains. And there's a small chance that the AI, being the AI, um, will make a mistake and attack the Centaur Captains instead. I kind of doubt it. But I think that's the best thing to do. Okay, it doesn't manage to cast a spell. They do go for the Green Dragons and they take out four of them. Now I can attack this and try and blind it, but I don't think there's any need to. I can potentially use the Centaur Captains to absorb retaliation from something. This is probably like the toughest fight that I've put myself into uh, in about a year on this game. Since I came back to YouTube halfway through last year, I don't think I've had a fight this tough. I think I'm going to send these forward. Somewhere like here. I could try and run from the Magi. But no, there's no point. We should definitely blind them. They're going to be one of the toughest stacks to deal with, potentially almost as difficult as the Behemoths. And we only have 50 spell points to work with, which is going to be diminished pretty rapidly. Let's see, so at the start of next turn, we'll go Green Dragons. I think they can get across. No, they can't. Okay, that doesn't work. We could just kill around. We could take it as an opportunity to cast Mass Haste, Mass Haste and then send the Green Dragons across. But then the turn order gets messed up. I want to make sure that the Green Dragons attack first on the Orc Chieftains, just so we don't have to take such a bad retaliation with the War Unicorns. But that might not be possible. I could just send in the Battle Dwarfs to launch the first hit. And then we do have to take one bad retaliation, but that might be worth it. Okay, start of round four. We are, of course. Well, if we went for mass haste, could we actually get away? We have to bear in mind they do have good morale, um, and so we can't really risk it. And if we do blind them, then we give it some time for the spells to wear off. So let's play it safe. Let's move forward with everything. Because actually, I think this does work. So we're going to wait with these, I think. Yeah, let's wait with these. Send these forward. I could use these just to absorb the retaliation, but I think it's better to do it with something else instead. So making sure we leave enough space for the war unicorns to get through. Send these forward too. And then send these. And then I should maybe move these out of the way and let the dwarves go for the hit. 
but then I have to wait next turn with them. So these guys have got four rounds left of being blinded, these ones only five. And I feel like those five rounds are gonna be run down very quickly indeed. And then they're all gonna be waking up within one round of each other, and I don't think we can take out these stacks in just one round each. Implosion costs 30 spell points, so we do have it, but it's not gonna do enough damage to be worth that. Not worth three blinds. Still, I think we do this. And then round five begins. So now I think we haste everything. Send this in first. Only takes out 20 of them. And then I can send in the unicorns. Get about 25 kills. Maybe blind them, that's the other thing to bear in mind. I could blind them. kind of difficult to make it work. The Centaur Captains should be the first thing we send in to hit the Ancient Behemoths. Then in order to do that I think we have to have already waited with the, with the War Unicorns um, so we can't really use them afterwards. Either that or we attack them with everything that's faster than 9 speed and then immediately blind them. Possibly I think it would be ha it would have to be right after the dwarves' turn, which is also not too great because the dwarves are like our best stack probably at this point, literally. I did say we'd get a dwarf power stack, but I think that is unironically what we have, and um, that is our best stack. So we need to make sure we use it well. So I don't know. I think we should send them in first. Okay, doesn't manage to cast a spell, so we've wasted quite a few of his spell points. I don't know what exactly he's been going for. Now we have to decide what to do next. So I think we do want to try and focus down the Ancient Behemoth now, but we have to be very careful. So, Centaur Captains should be the ones to take the Retaliation. But we have to wait till next round begins. And then round 6 begins. I don't have Disrupting Ray. In terms of other spells, Precision is pretty useless. Air Elemental I don't think is... yeah, 16 Elementals. Could use them just to absorb Retaliations, but 20 spell points is not going to be worth it. Slow is not so good at this level. Just drops their speed by 25% and I don't think that's actually going to help us very much. Stone skin could help us just to absorb an initial hit. But yeah, I think we need to mostly focus on blind. We can almost go for mass bless, but we can't quite go for the full thing. And yeah, I don't think any of this stuff helps us too much either, so we've not really got the best spells for this. Probably just want to blind things over and over again. I guess. We still have to take that retaliation though. So I think we do that with the centaur captains and then we just hit them with a few other stacks. It's not going to do much. I don't know if I'm working this out right but whatever. Let's just go for it. I'm going to wait. And send this thing forward to attack. That's going to get taken out. And then we shoot it. Ah, it's actually the green dragons that don't get their shot, of course, because we used haste. So we can at least do a bit of damage and then blind them again. So let's go for that initial hit. Only take out the one of them, but the next one is at least down to its last hit point. Saved by the, uh, the ring of life by the looks of it. And then we do just have to blind it again before it gets its go nice as it would be to get that kill. Uh, we definitely need to just blind it. And then everything else we're just gonna move down towards the Thunderbirds.
Fortunately, our blister is dead, which I didn't even think about, but that could have woken something up, which would have been absolutely terrible. Although I think it does shoot at the opposing blister. So, kind of got away with it there. I'm going to put these guys out of range of the Thunderbirds, which is going to lower their attack, but might still be worth doing, because they're going to go before the Green Dragons. And that's a bit of a problem, because I don't think we're going to be able to take them out before then. So I'm going to put them here. And then we're going to move these down. Can potentially go for another mass spell, if I had one, but I don't. Maybe Air Elemental, but then we can't use Blind again, which I don't think is worth it. Could just go for Shield on a stack we particularly want to protect. That's only 15% protection, which is just not going to help us much. So yeah, I think we have pretty limited options. Um, Bless could work on something. Let's have a look at our damage range. So Battle Dwarves actually benefit a lot from Bless. I think that actually... Yeah, so that actually is going to increase their damage. It's going to literally double their damage. So that's going to be pretty key, definitely. But first we have to absorb the retaliation with something, which is going to have to be the Unicorns, which might end up blinding them again, but we'll see. So... Let's wait with everything. Next round begins. So we're going to start by just going for the attack. Okay. So we lost two in response, which isn't too bad. And I think we go for Bless. Need to actually double check that our dwarves are faster, which yes they are, by one. So hit them with that, and then we'll go for the Bless. Now they're going to be doing 5 damage each, which is going to get 16 kills. And Clavius once again, unable to use his spell, um, really wasted his Thunderbird's turn there. Not sure there's a really safe way to do this, I think this works though. As far as I understand it, this is safe. So they're down to 9, which is very manageable. Can just finish them off here. Let's see, so we, we definitely want to attack the Ancient Behemoths with the Battle Dwarfs first. The thing is, the Ogre Mage are just as scary. How much money do we have? 34,000. And we can actually pay that. Can that be right? No, it's not. That's, we definitely don't have that amount of money. So that doesn't work. I'm just not sure how, how we can actually take this fight because it's... It's just too dangerous. Okay, so they're wiped out, and then we can move away from the Ancient Behemoths if we want to. Which one should we take on first? Well, these are going to be blinded for two more rounds than these. So we probably have to go after the Ogre Magi next. We can put ourselves in range of them to get a full powered shot. We can also mob them, and then blind them again before the green dragons go for their attack, which is probably the best option. Let's go to here. They could get their morale, but um, we should blind them before they get their go, so I think it's safe. And I do want to attack with these first, but I think it does make sense to do it with the war unicorns first. Just for the extra damage. So, given that, Let's skip this round. This is gonna suck. This is really gonna suck, unless we blind them twice. Let's see. Will we get lucky? No luck. And we actually only take three losses, which isn't as bad as I thought. And they no longer have that good defense to keep them alive. Do a nice bit of damage there, and then we get 19 kills with this. And now we have to decide whether to blind them again, which perhaps we don't need to. They're going to have about 39 left. I think it is best to do so. And then we kind of just have to do the same thing again to the behemoth. Um, but these can't get through, so we've got to give it 
at least one more round, which we can do. And the Grand Elves are safe, and I'm pretty sure they get a full powered shot from there. Okay, round 11 begins. How does that work? Round 11 begins. Shouldn't it be... Surely it should be our war unicorns that go now. Okay, so if we wake them up... Then... We can still hit them. So I guess this is actually probably a good thing, although I can't really make sense of it. The war unicorns should definitely... Okay, so we get two kills on them. Yeah, I'm not sure what's happened with the war unicorns if, if they've done something and it's just not popped up on there. I guess they've already used their move or something. So we can actually focus these down. And we probably don't need to blind them again. Doesn't do too much damage back to us. Dwarves definitely, unironically, our power stack, which is nice. The problem is, of course, we've got Ayn after this, and she's the strongest hero of the blue player, and she's going to have an easy, even easier time against us now. And we have no spell points left, but I think we did have to use them here, just to keep our, our stacks alive. So I can just go and finish this guy off. Let's see. So we've got 131 hit points, which I think should take the hit. We get lucky too, so we take them out. And then we've lost our haste. Which means the green dragons would have to go in and take the first hit, and I'm not sure we want to do that. I could just use haste again. But then we have to really focus them down. Which might just be the best way to do things. If we go for curse. That actually does affect them quite a lot. And that's probably the better option compared to going for something like Stone Skin. But it means that our green dragons have to take the first retaliation. Which I'm not sure they can. Dwarves actually can't reach, so I think we have to haste. Although we don't have to attack them this turn, we can actually just wait. They're blinded for another five rounds. So, could use this as an opportunity just to clear a few things out. We've still got our ammo cart, so we can easily take out the ballista and the, the first aid tent if we want to. Let's move a little bit closer. If we knock this thing out, can we get back to attack the Yoga Mage? I think we can. And I think we just pretty much skip the rest of the turns. Okay, so the round order has kind of reverted now. Okay, we know the next round is going to begin with the green dragons. So I guess... I guess we could blind them. But first we have to take the retaliation with something. And I think we want to go in with the dwarves first, maybe the unicorns. So I think I will curse them. Let's check this. If I've got five, yeah, if I've got five spell points, I can go for haste. So we'll curse them this turn. Let's check how long our bless lasts. Ah, it's about to expire. That's a problem. Should I just go for the attack? Then she lose one more dragon. I'm gonna do it. Don't lose the dragon, but I don't think we can focus them down quick enough, so they're gonna be vulnerable to the next attack. I can't blind them now. 
then perhaps that was a mistake. But we do still have five spell points we can use. So we could just, I don't know. Well, we can't blind them again this round anyway, but I, I do think we should have perhaps saved the blind. Although if we didn't curse them, I'm pretty sure the green dragon would already be dead. So I guess it doesn't make a difference. Okay, so the dwarves are going to go in, they're going to kill 18, and then he's going to run off, which I don't want. I'd really like to knock him out, but... There's nothing we can do at this point, and I do just want to weaken his army. He goes for the Thunderbolt and he runs off. We actually managed to save most of the elves. Did lose four green dragons, all the silver pegasi, all the centaurs, um, and quite a few of the war unicorns, but... The stack of battle dwarves is actually relatively okay, uh, and we have wiped out most of his forces. Now here I'm going to be forced to take a skill I don't want, potentially, or I just accept that I might have to go for tactics, because I've only got like one slot after this, I think. I don't want to go for tactics. Yeah, so we're forced into a pretty bad choice. I think I'd like to go for archery, but... We don't have that many elves now, so it's not actually going to benefit us that much. Okay, so that was all around a little bit of a shit show. We need to make sure we get our spell points back. Let's see if Sylvia can reach, just to give him a few extra movement points, but she can't. Okay, so in that case, she'll actually move up a bit. The risk here is Ain is going to come along. If she goes, well, she could go for the Dragon Utopia, which is really bad in itself. And then after that, we might just have to let her take a town, do as much damage as we can in the siege defense, and then hope for the best, I guess. Might have to try and let her take one Rampart town and rush Uvritin into the other. I'm not really sure, because I, I don't think we can get there before she can. Unless she does something really stupid. Let's see. Yeah, she's coming straight for us and she can travel pretty far. And Orange, let's actually have a look. How much damage did we do to him? Well, he's still considered to be a stronger player than us. So, this is proving to be a much tougher map than I thought. Or else we don't need to worry about. Okay, so I don't think we can get past her. If she comes to the south, we could maybe try and chain some more units to Ufritin. But first we have to actually get out of her way. Um, I could actually lure her using Kaya, but I don't really know what we gain from that. Other than buying a bit of time for our Rampart Town. And there's not really anything we can buy in these two towns that's going to be really worthwhile. I could start moving towards the Dragon Cave. I also do have the option of Ghost Dragons, but they're going to drop my morale. We have a quick check of this. I'm sure there's someone we can tuck into a town somewhere. Yeah, let's put Pike Dram in the town. Let's have a quick look at this. Okay, so we can negate luck. Don't think we want to do that though. Hellstorm helmet could be quite useful. We can actually afford to go for anything we like here. Uh, the talisman of mana. Did I just buy something? No, I didn't for you. Okay, the talisman of mana. Is that the last? I think that's the last part of the wizard's well, surely. And if I'm wrong, then I'm going to be a bit upset, but does make sense to go for that, I think. And then what we can actually do is recover... And this is really lucky, if this is actually going to work. This will be extremely lucky. We can recover all our spell points, and then potentially Town Portal back to our Rampart Town before she can take it. And it's fairly cheap, too. So let's just buy it with some Sulfur. And then, let's take a, a relatively fast unit. Ready for next turn. And we need to make sure we're not in range of Ain, but... 
I'm pretty sure this is it. Let's give this a go. Okay, so our new forces. We're up to 80 elves again, which isn't bad, especially now that we've got the uh, the bow of elven cherrywood and the archery skill. They're going to do a bit more damage. And um, we do have 10 silver pegasite too, and we can use them to waste some time at least. I probably don't actually want the centaur captain. Split the pegasi again instead. Back up to 11 green dragons, 17 more unicorns. And not much else, so it's not really enough to take her on. But it's something. I think as long as we stay out of her range, we might be okay. But we do need to make sure we stay out of her range. So I think I want to move somewhere where I can actually sneak past her, potentially. Don't know if that'll work. And I need to be pretty confident that she's not going to catch us. It's really important to get this right. So let's check. I think she went pretty far, and I feel like she has logistics. And yeah, I feel like that was not a bad amount of distance. So... Maybe this won't work. I think this is probably safe. But still a little bit risky. Should be safe for one turn. We're going to need to move Kaya back to safety. Or just send him straight past. But no, I think he should go back towards the Rampart Town. And bear in mind, of course, that if we stop... Instead of going after her... Then it's going to be harder to chase her down. But then again, we should have our spell points back. That's the thing. So let's try this. As long as we can reach a point where we use Town Portal and it takes us back to this town, which should be doable from anywhere around here, I think, then we can potentially get back and defend our town before she can take it. So let's try this. Yeah, we can get the wizard as well, so that's awesome. Gets us all of our spell points back every single day. It's not one of the best artifacts, uh, combination artifacts, but it's still fairly solid. And that's going to help us a lot. Could buy another ballista if I want to. I'm not sure I care that much. I shouldn't really do that. Um, especially if I'm going to be using blind. But we will get all our spell points back um, without having to actually go as far as the dungeon town. And then I'm hoping we can just travel a decent distance next turn. Uh, we should go before her if we have the silver pegasi on us. So let's take everything slower than a silver pegasi. And then I think Sylvia can just go down here. I'm not sure about the blister, but I'll leave my options open. Uh, Kyra, I'm going to move back towards the starting area. And then let's send Genova back to the town. And Coronius could go back to the town, or we can just go for the water wheel instead. So let's go visit that while we can. And I'm probably going to hold back on buying anything this turn, maybe. It's only day two. But yeah, we might need to just do some kind of emergency purchase somewhere. Uh, I'm even tempted to try and get Black Dragons at this point, because we have lost quite a few stacks. So we could start moving towards that. Gonna need to make sure we keep the Sulfur coming. Shadow Den, I think, already has the castle. No, it doesn't. But that's not gonna help us immediately, that's the thing. And I do want to save up to get gold dragons, and that's going to make more difference than pretty much anything else we can do. So I will just hold back on spending money for now. Shouldn't really be thinking long term at this point. We've got a pretty urgent crisis on our hands. I guess I could buy some more elves. Because we should at least have time to bring them back. And then I think the upgrade to the homestead is fairly cheap. 
Oh, we've already got it, of course. Yeah, so definitely worth bringing those back. The rest of these guys, I think I might just leave them as they are. Thing is, of course, if we get all our spell points back, that's going to be just 40. It's not going to be the 80 that we had in the previous fight, but I think we have to accept that. Let's see what happens. Hopefully no more orange for some time as she is headed straight for Rampart and manages to catch up to Kaya. And uh, I should have given him something slightly faster, or at least a few more units as, yeah, we cannot save him or her. I've once again forgotten what gender he or she is. Okay, so the question here is, do we have enough movement points to get back and cast Town Portal before she can reach our town? I'm not sure how many exactly we have to save, but we do need to give back all the units. And I will take one of these just so I can move slightly faster. Could have saved Kyra if he had a Silver Pegasi instead, or a Silver Pegasus instead of uh, a Centaur Captain. It would also have been fine if we had just more than one or two units, I guess. But yeah, I think that's best. And we just have to hope this works. Because I, I don't think the game takes into account whether you're underground or not when it decides what your closest town is. But I feel like the closest town is surely going to be Shadow Den for the foreseeable future. I think we have to lean slightly to the right, although it doesn't really make a difference. Were we to cast it now, it would take us to Shadow Den, unsurprisingly. We could maybe get back to this town instead, if we went to the west. Then I think she can reach us in Forest Glen in just one turn. So this is a problem. I might just have to try and do as much damage as I can with a, a castle and a stack of dendroids. Okay, I'm going to try this again. Nearest town occupied. Okay, that might be a good sign. Certainly suggests that we might get away with this. Forest Glen, that's the one, right? Oh, perfect. That was just pure luck. The fact that we got the wizards well. If we went to Shadow Den, then we wouldn't have been able to get back to Forest Glen this turn. So that could make a massive difference. And now we can jump ourselves straight back to Forest Glen. And we've got a solid defense here. She could go to the west and take this town instead. But I'm prepared to beef that up. And I'm also prepared to use my dendroids here. So we've got a big fight coming up, but we've been given a massive helping hand by the artifact merchants there. So we do at least have a chance, and uh, we could even perhaps try and get ourselves some gold dragons, as we can afford to upgrade the dragon cliffs, and we should at least have enough left over to upgrade one or two dragons. But it might make more sense just to get a, a good stack of 41 dendroid soldiers. I will decide in the next part. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time